What hobby does not get more expensive the more you dive into it? Magnet fishing. All you need is a strong magnet and some rope really and maybe a few other things like gloves. Might even find something valuable one day if you're exceedingly lucky. Collecting rocks that you find. Smithing. It's always just as expensive. Writing. All you need is a Word document in your brain. Unless you're like me, who prefers IRL writing, and now has a dragon's hoard of journals to write in. Extreme couponing. Geocaching. Lock picking. Oddly enough. Lace making. Depending on the style of lace you're doing, the initial cost of tools can be fairly steep. Or super cheap, some styles require a needle. Just a needle. But once you've got the equipment, you're only ever required to buy thread and maybe pins or paper. Okay. Pattern books. But if you're even a little bit creative, you've got that covered. Source. Used to make lace. Over the course of 15 years, I spent maybe $200. Not 200 a year. 200 spread over 15 years. And most of that was because I wanted specialty threads, like handspun linen, etc. Wildcrafting. That's pretty much the entire point. Note. Wildcrafting should be practiced mindfully. With sustainability in mind. Take only what you need. Leave enough for the plants and animals to live well and reproduce. Abundance is there. But only if we don't harm it. Cross stitch, embroidery, it's fairly cheap in general but once you have a few sets in. You have a wide variety of colors to do your own. Ada. Whoa. Thanks for the silver, my first. I've recently returned to 3D modeling. It's a hobby with a rock bottom price of entry you can invest in $10 to $20 at a time. You can start with Blender. A free and powerful program that lets you do everything from modeling and sculpting to texture painting and animating. Getting the fundamentals down is also free thanks to incredible tutors like Grant Abbott and Andrew Price. After that, the world is your oyster. You can either throw a few bucks towards more in-depth tutorial courses or buy add-ons that enhance your workflow. You don't have to do any of that, though and can just let your creativity run wild. Edit. I'm pleased to see that this has blown up. If you want to learn more about 3D modeling on a budget, I suggest you download Blender from Steam or their official site. HTTPS www blender org download also here's an excellent beginners course to help you get started for free https www youtube com watch v equals 7 m ron squy j g w and t equals nines alternately you can try the fabled and updated donut tutorial https www youtube com watch V equals TPRNSACITJ4 and list equals PLJEOINR3ZGEQ0U2MZVGAAHEBTXLB6U. Also, be sure to check out the amazing work your fellow Redditors are posting to subs like. And, edit 2. For the people who are still checking this out, here are some more tidbits to clear up confusion. 1. When I made this post, I was thinking specifically about 3D modeling for its own sake. As a relaxing hobby you do to unwind without thinking ahead. Picture yourself sitting down, creating a kitchen or a spaceship or a zombie dog for fun's sake and feeling good about yourself. That can lead to commissioned work or 3D printing later on. But it absolutely doesn't have to if you don't want it to. 2. Having good hardware helps but isn't a prerequisite. Any computer made in the last 10 years is good enough to run Blender and let you pick up the fundamentals. Whether you want to upgrade after that is up to you but you shouldn't need to unless you've gone way down the rabbit hole. 3. Being artsy helps but isn't a necessity either. Anyone can get into 3D with time and patience. Playing cards. Chess. Easy to learn. Difficult to master. Resources to learn are freely available on the internet and it is gaining quite a bit of popularity on streaming websites over the last few months. Edit. If someone new or any beginner want to learn chess, I would love to teach, feel free to DM. Also if you are really interested, please head over to Edit 2. My inbox is inundated with replies and it makes me really happy that a simple comment made so many people interested in chess. If you need any help, please include your chess, com or liches, org ID or both. Register if new, so that it will be easier to communicate. Edit 3. Going to bed, will reply in a few hours. Keep up the chess hype everyone and also the cheese hype. Loads of people misreading the first word, lol. 
I started a podcast as a hobby with two friends that moved to different countries in 2018 and we are still going strong. We talk about different topics every couple of weeks and it's very fun. The only expense we have is the host website but we only pay because we have uploaded many episodes and needed more cloud space but it's still very cheap in comparison to other hobbies. Writing. It may even happen that by diving into it you could earn something. Reading. Stick collecting. No joke. It sounds dumb at first. But once you get a few solid sticks, you'll start to love it. You should see my arsenal. Game development. Unity is free. Visual Studio is free. Blender is free. Aceprite is $20 but also not necessary. But highly recommended. It's a really fun hobby that doesn't have to cost anything if you don't want it to. Programming. You already have a computer, tablet, 3DS etc. And if you need a dedicated device, a Raspberry Pi 4 is less than $100. Most tools are free. Open source tools are free forever. Internet is full of tutorials and examples. YouTube has a lot of courses in any field you like. Programming for fun has a competitive side too. Edit 1. For everyone asking about 3DS. Yes. Smile Basic. Edit 2. A more capable Smile Basic is now available on Switch 2. Edit 3. Gamified coding is a great way to practice and improve programming skills. Coding game is a great example of that. Meditation. Walking around outside and picking up shiny stuff you find on the floor sometimes known as goblining or magpieing. Regardless of your hobby, the cost is inversely proportional to your self-control. The more self-control you have, the cheaper the hobby is. Hiking. I love getting lost in outdoor spaces. It inspires my creative work and is generally free. Reading books from the library, card tricks, shadow puppetry, pressing flowers, singing, stargazing, disc golf. It's really fun and you can buy discs for like $10 and that's pretty much all you need. Searches through comments to find a new hobby. Edit. Thanks for the do nothing award. I'll continue doing nothing. Edit number two. Platinum. You are way too kind stranger. Thank you. Gardening. If anything it becomes virtually free after a few harvests because you can take the seeds out of the vegetables you just picked and replant them. Plus you already have free compost from the remaining plant matter, peels, etc. You picked. If you play your cards right while there is an initial investment it'll pay for itself in the end. Learning languages. Daydreaming. Origami. Bird watching. Dumpster diving. Weightlifting. Average person would even save a ton of money by fixing their diet as a side effect. Computer programming. Python is free. The modules are free. New modules keep coming out and getting better. For free. Plenty of resources out there. YouTube. Automate the boring stuff. Com. Are free. A hobby that changes the way you see the world and adds another method of problem solving. It gets you exposed to all kinds of other fields. Also it could land you a work from home job making great money or save you time on completing repetitive boring tasks. Learning Python gets you a huge head start on learning other languages as well but Python can be used for a whole project. It's vast. Skateboarding. It's very cheap so far. I do recommend buying a good quality board. Not something from Walmart, but I've gotten a lot out of this board and when I break the board. Instead of paying another $140 for a whole new complete, I just have to buy a new deck for $30 to $65 and so on for the rest of the parts. Edit. Just wanted to add to this how much I've loved skateboarding since I started a couple months ago. I never thought I would do something like it and I used to have horrible balance. But with some work my balance has become better than I could have dreamed and I've had a ton of fun. All of my friends are starting now. Collecting buckets. I have 7 buckets. The fourth one is also dark blue. Exercising. Running. You only need to buy a good pair of shoes and some workout clothes and you'll be set for a while. Edit. Okay. My bad. Exercising is expensive. Sorry. Thanks to everyone for helping me realize how expensive all my hobbies are. Stay away from Warhammer 40k. You'll start with. Oh. Once I have my area set up and my paints it's not so bad. Then one day you'll look at your army and realize that while Raven Guard is great, you really want to try an Eldar army. Eventually you'll feel like you went through the warp without a Geller field. Reading. Library is free and there are always cheap books at garage sales. Thrift shops. Etc. Gardening. 
writing, listening to music, meditation, walking, sketching, reading books, comics at the library, swimming, pixel art. Unlike other graphic design methods where you might need expensive software like Photoshop or Illustrator, you can use MS Paint or a variety of free software, even for animation. D. It's a great hobby because the pixels limit where you can place them, finite number of combinations and such, and refining techniques with color palettes, lighting, blending, etc. There is so much you can do. Cycling in theory. Buy a bike and only have to pay for minor maintenance while increasing fitness levels and happiness. However, one will quickly realize that the proper number of bikes to own is N plus 1 where N is the current number of bikes owned. Bodyweight fitness, barefoot running, yoga, but obviously you can let costs accelerate. If you have to to Mexico to run with Tarahumara or go to expensive yoga classes. Locally or in India, 